Dobre Ultra everybody! Behind me is the giant Zuber or bison in English and that can mean only one thing and that is I'm in Minsk, the capital city of Belarus. It's a balmy October morning, it's about one degree. We're off to the subway to see if we can go into the city and have a look around. Come along, let's see how we go. I'm just walking up to the subway entrance, but how good are these paths? You've got a designated area for walkers, a designated area for cyclists. They're huge, so wide, it's fantastic. And that's the entrance up there to the subway. Uh, I'm going to take a photo of the name of it. So hopefully at the end of the day, there's no dramas finding it again. Well, the metro wasn't too intimidating. You can easily catch it without uh, speaking any Russian. There's only two lines and your entrance fee is a token. So you just need to go up to the window, indicate how many tokens you wanted. I wanted two. And then uh, just swipe your FBOSS card and she'll hand you the tokens. So it's nice and easy. There's no different fares for any destinations. So you really don't need to speak Russian to, uh, to catch the metro, which certainly is nice and user friendly for a tourist. I appreciated that. Now, to so walk up here, there's something of interest for you. I watch all the uh, movies in Australia and America about the KGB. Well, the KGB is alive and well here in Bel alive and well here in Belarus. This big yellow building behind me. This is the KGB office here in Belarus. Now, it's not hidden, it's not secret. In fact, if you even look on Google Maps, it's actually marked as the KGB building. Now that I'm away from the main road there, Independence Avenue is very beautiful, but uh, very, very noisy. Suffering, suffering some technical equipment challenges today. Having to hold my camera by hand, but uh, we'll persevere. It's still bloody freezing, let me tell you that. It's still only about one degree. Not to worry, we'll push on. If you uh, decide to come and vis visit Belarus, as a Westerner, you will land here in Minsk. You have no choice. Uh, Minsk is a city of about two million people. It's very spread out, very big. And gee whiz, I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a lot to see. You would want, or at least a couple of days here, maybe even three, just in the city itself. Um, very, very beautiful. Today, what I've decided to do is, I'm not going to try and do a, uh, a full city tour for you. I'm just going to challenge you with some uh, interesting visual sights and maybe even a bit of trivia. Here we go with our first one. Have a look at this here. Set of, st set of scales with the locals. This statue is basically uh, a memorial or a, a confirmation of when Minsk adopted the metric system. Now, Australia went metric in 1974, and we won't even talk about America. So have your guess. When do you think this city, the city of Minsk, adopted the metric system of measurement? Let's get down here out of the sun so the sun's not blasting us. The city of Minsk, having obtained self-government under the Mugberg law, 1499, began its rapid development as a center of crafts and trade introduced the standards of the european metric system gained the right for the municipal scales installation and for tax collection 1499 here i am thinking australia is moving ahead quite fast and these guys have had the metric system since 1499 
walking through what is one of the uh, older parts of town. As with every city in Belarus, most of it, if not all of it, was destroyed during World War II and uh, has been rebuilt since. Let's see if we can sneak a look inside this church. Well, you'll have to take my word that it's absolutely stunning inside that church. I was informed in no uncertain terms there will be no filming in here, or even photography for that manager. Here in town, they have the Musée de Neg. That is the Museum of Money. I'm not sure what uh, me and my friends here are talking about. One of the things that does uh, catch you out in this city as a, as a Russian learner there's a lot of the street signs, a lot of the memorial signs, they're not actually written in Russian. They're written in Belarusian, which is quite a different language, and uh, I have no idea about that language. It does catch you out sometimes. Key to the city, anybody? Like a lot of parts of the world now, you can... Um, Tap and go, the old scooters to get around the town if you want to. <clears throat> One of the most infamous names in world history, Lee Harvey Oswald. He originally served in the uh, US military where he was uh, eventually dishonorably discharged and when he was disillusioned with uh, America he sought uh, asylum here in what was uh, the Soviet Union at that point in time and he was granted that uh, and then he came to live here in Minsk and up here, the, the bell, second bell con up there, that is Lee Harvey Oswald's apartment. He lived here with his wife, where he had a daughter, but then he became um, disillusioned with the Soviet system as well, and went back to America. And then, of course, I think it was about uh, a year after his arrival back in America, he shot President John F. Kennedy. Perhaps I'd better put a disclaimer on that. Uh, that's if you believe Lee Harvey Oswald shot President Kennedy. Who knows? I've walked all the way down Independence Avenue, which is the main road up the middle of the city of Minsk. This is the, uh, the victory monument for the victory in World War II on the 3rd of July 1944 the Red Army finally freed Minsk from the grip of the Nazis. As you saw in one of my other videos the USSR awarded 12 cities hero status for their efforts in um, World War II so we have Moscow, Kiev, Odessa, and the same 12 as we saw before. Around the base of the Victory Monument you can see four large bronze wreaths. These wreaths represent the four fronts of the Red Army that came and helped liberate the city. To access the, uh, the memorial, you don't need to cross the road, they have this fantastic underpass. It also has a lot of stories and history down here. Some of it's uh, even in English, so not everybody will struggle. Look here.
well, it's finally warmed up a bit, and I'm able to take my hoodie off, but uh, I stopped for a uh, pretty quick snack. In, of all the unbelievable places, TGI Fridays, an American franchise. And that's probably the biggest change I've seen in the city. I was here two and a half years ago, and now when I walk around, the number of KFC, McDonald's, Hungry Jacks, Burger King, um, Domino's Pizza is staggering. The war is on here like it is in the rest of the world. The one thing you notice about the kids here today is there is almost no overweight children at all. Now that these uh, big fat ass American food chains are here, We'll have to see what happens to the uh, to the next generation. Hopefully, they don't follow the same um, the same path we have. Anyway, that's uh, quite a nice view. Here in the. Uh, the main city square now, and here is a bell. This bell was cast uh, to symbolize or to ensure the people who died of radiation poisoning in this country are remembered. Uh, this country obviously was uh, the biggest victim of uh, the Chernobyl disaster, although Chernobyl is actually in the Ukraine, it's very close to the uh, the Belarusian border. And unfortunately for the Belarusian people, on that fateful day, the winds were blowing this way and blew uh, the radiation cloud across Belarus, killing many people and uh, making much of the country unusable for many many years to come there's a bit more information about our our bell placed here on december 12th 2013 is the earth from the site near alamogadoro new mexico us where the first atomic bomb was tested this is the main government building Standing out there, proud as punch as usual, on his plinth is Lenin. The man who murdered three million of his own people. I'm told he stands out the front of all the, uh, the government buildings. I guess uh, his biggest redeeming feature was he had an unexpected death and Stalin took over. And he said, three million deaths? That's nothing. Hold my beer. More than, well, they speculate somewhere between 20 and 100 million people Stalin is responsible for the death of. I guess, like anything, history is what you tell the next generation. I mean, uh, I guess from a Western point of view, we don't really have a leg to stand on, do we? Look what's happening in our universities currently with the rewriting of history to suit the current. Uh, the current narrative that they want that they want reality to be well here I'm in front of the main spectacular city fountain but uh, of course for winter she's turned off but uh, each of the, the major cities of uh, Belarus is represented that's the breast park but I want to have a look at in the middle there see the big birds they're iced or as we would know them storks now the stork is um, one of the national emblems of Belarus and uh, there are plenty of them here well actually right now there's none how do you feel about having a national emblem that only spends six months of the year in your country basically it gets too cold for them and at this time of year they head south Probably in Thailand or somewhere warm like that, where I'd like to be about now. Oh, 
Yeah. Quite common to see this little pop-up seasonal fruit markets everywhere. Yeah, Minsk. She's a big historic city. I've only uh, touched on a couple of things here today, but it certainly would be worth spending a couple of days here if you were in this part of the world, that's for sure. Now, my biggest challenge of the day, I've got to find my way home again. See you next time.